What's going on everyone? It's Ozzy from Oz Sucks Hardware and I'm finally done with school. I finished all my finals and I'm done for the semester. And so I thought, what's a better way to finish off my academic school year than with a new video? And so if you guys have been following me on Twitter, then you've probably seen this video teased a little bit, but this is essentially my 80 or so dollar custom water cooling setup. So this is gonna be the first of a two part series. I decided to split it up into two because I wanted to go in depth as to why I picked all the components that I chose. And at the same time, I didn't want to make the entire process like a 30 minute video and this is actually my first custom water cooling setup I have used AIOs before probably about two or three times so I do understand uh, at least some part of liquid cooling but I've never done custom before and I suppose going budget probably wouldn't be the best way to start off in the custom water cooling world, but I decided to go for it anyway. If I follow tutorials, I should be okay. There's a lot to water cooling, more than I thought, so uh, I had to make sure that I got all the right components, and it took about a week of research to do all of that, but I think uh, I'm pretty satisfied with what came out. And a few more disclaimers, I know I'm talking a lot in this intro. This is actually not going to be for my custom computer, this guy right here with the uh, Ryzen 7 and RX 480. This is actually going to be for my little brothers. I'm going to test the waters and see if it works on their computer. And I've actually already built their gaming computer. If you've been on the channel since at least January, then you've already seen the video. But a few mishaps happened with that, so we're going to rebuild it and I'm going to try to install this custom water cooling setup on there. And one of the main reasons why I decided to do a budget water cooling loop, especially as my first one, is to show people that you don't need three, four hundred, five hundred dollar water cooling rigs uh, to to get into custom water cooling. Now, of course, if you have more expensive material, then it's probably going to work better and it's going to look better. But I wanted to give people an option. So this is sub $100. It's going to work practically. You don't have to use like Coke bottles or a hose or anything. You don't have to compromise and it's probably gonna work pretty well. So everything here is compatible. It's gonna look aesthetically pleasing and it's practical. It's something that you guys can replicate. Of course, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, you totally can, but I will put the links to all of these parts in the description. Anyway, I've been blabbing on for way too long, so let's go into the components and we'll go from there. The very first one is this one right here. It is the generic 240 millimeter copper radiator that I picked up from eBay for about $35.99. Now I could have picked up an aluminum radiator for about 10 to 15 bucks cheaper, but the reason why I went with copper is because I wanted to match the metals as closely to the water blocks that you see right here, which are both copper based. If I went with aluminum, then galvanic corrosion, the metal inside of the radiator would have deteriorated faster and the blocks could have deteriorated faster. And like I mentioned, I want this to be practical and long term. So if I can get away from any kind of corrosion, then that's good. So I'd rather spend the extra 10 to 15 bucks just to maintain that longevity. And since we're talking about the water blocks anyway, these are my two water blocks right here. This is the CPU water block. It is copper based as well, and I picked it up for $16.99. And this is the GPU water block. It is also copper based, and I picked it up for also $16.99. Now, unfortunately, the CPU water block does not support the AM4 platform, so I can't use this on any Ryzen chips, but it supports everything prior to that, and it supports most Intel platforms. The awesome part about these two water blocks is that both of them come with their own fittings. So this one, as you can see, the fittings are already on there, and then this one comes with its own fittings as well. Uh, they're not on the table right now, so I don't even have to spend money on fittings, and then they both came with their own thermal paste. So thermal paste and fittings, they are already paid for essentially with these two blocks, which is awesome because fittings can get kind of expensive. I'm still not entirely sure if I'm going to use the GPU water block. I'm not sure if my video card is referenced. It's the 7950 and that's what I'm gonna use in my little brother's build. And I can always use it on something else if I want to in the future. As for the fittings, I got four XSPC barb fittings for about 1079, I believe on eBay, uh, which is pretty cheap for fittings, honestly. They can run a lot more expensive the cool thing though is that a lot of my components already came with some kind of fitting on them so I think I calculated it and I only need to actually use two of these. The other two are going to be left unused. I could use them for a future build, save them for later. Yeah. As for the pump and reservoir, it's gonna be this small guy right here. It's one of the few uh, components in this water cooling setup that is actually name branded. It's by Sys Cooling, and it's the SC300T, I believe. It's a pretty small reservoir, so bleeding this and then filling it up is gonna be 
tiresome. It's gonna take some time, but I mean, I picked this up for about 20 bucks on eBay. So for a pump and reservoir combo, I can't complain. The pump reservoir combo comes with its own two fittings, which is awesome because I don't have to use the barb fittings. I can save them for later. And I believe it also comes with uh, these tightening clamp things for the fittings as well. So if I want the tubing to stay tighter, then I also can do that as well. It comes with a pretty ghetto mounting system. Um, it has one of these uh, sticky pads right here. Uh, so, I mean, it is a mounting system, but it's not the best. And then it also comes with screws. So if you do want to screw it in somewhere, you definitely can. I'm not entirely sure how it works just yet, but again, in the next part of the series, I'll keep you guys updated. I picked up some PVC vinyl tubing, uh, about 12 feet. It has a three by eight inner diameter and a one half out outer diameter. So it's gonna fit all of the fittings on the rest of the components just fine. I picked it up for about $4.12 on eBay. Now I do understand that PVC pipes tend to stain a lot quicker than other types of pipes, but I knew that coming in. So I'm totally okay with that. If it stains, then it stains. If it doesn't, then I can just color it to a color that prevents the staining from being super obvious. Anyway, 12 feet is pretty good, especially for only uh, $4, so I can't complain about that at all. So that's pretty much everything for the main water cooling setup, and I did pick up a few more goodies just so I can add a little bit more pizzazz to the uh, setup and kind of make it my own. So the first thing that I picked up was actually this Primo Chill UV red dye, and I'm going for a Christmas E theme, so I'm gonna have red coolant running through uh, the water cooling loop, and then I'm gonna have green fans, which I'm about to get to right here. So the fans that I picked up are actually these very generic, but it looks like their name brand, their generic brand 120 millimeter uh, green LED fans. So I'm probably gonna station these around the case. I don't think I'll use them for the radiator. I might, but that's just something that I have to, I don't know, kind of figure out as I go along when I plan out how I'm gonna do the loop. But these things get uh, pretty bright. Uh, they have a two-year warranty, which is awesome, so you can always return them and get your money back if you don't like them. But they're pretty standard. I only picked them up for 10 bucks for two of these, very cheap on eBay, and they should work just fine. So the total price of everything is a little bit convoluted because it depends on what I'm going to be using in the water cooling setup uh, and if I want to add things like the dye or if I'm gonna be using these fans instead of standard fans. So I wrote everything down. There are like four different scenarios here, but these are the prices, so just bear with me, I suppose. So if I include the price of just the water cooling parts, not including the dye or the fans right here, then everything here was 87.39 cents. And if I include half of the fittings, because I only really need two, so that means instead of 10.79, it's like 5.40, then the price of everything here is 81.99. Now, if I'm going to be using the GPU water blocks to have a completely full custom water cooling setup, then the total here would be about $100, give or take if I'm going to be using the two barb fittings uh, right here. And then for everything here, uh, including the GPU water block, a full custom loop, uh, the fans, and then the UV dye. Uh, everything was about 120 bucks. So best case scenario, it will cost you about 82 bucks. And the worst case scenario, it'll cost you about 123-ish, 124. So that's about a $40 difference. That totally depends on how pretty you wanna make it look and how expansive you want your water cooling setup to be. And that's essentially it for this video, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys found it interesting. And if you want to know more about the water cooling setup, follow me on Twitter because I will give you guys updates on that. And then subscribe because I will have this video out by Christmas, hopefully, maybe a little bit before, we'll see. Um, if you have any suggestions, any tips for a first time custom water cooling person, person, builder, I suppose, uh, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything that you would change, let me know in the comments below, and then that's pretty much it. I'll try to reply to as many comments as I can between uh, now and about, uh, We'll say a few hours from the upload. But if you guys like this video, then leave a like. If you loved it, share and subscribe and all of that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>